Hey y'all, welcome to this week's What's For Dinner. I had several people last week ask me if I would do like a beat the heat uh, type of meals. You know, things that we can make at home that aren't gonna heat up our house. I live in Texas and we have been having 100 degree weather or temperatures every single day. Like, I don't think there's been a day, maybe one day last week it was in the 90s. It's funny to think the 90s are cool <laughs> compared to the hundreds. So anyways, I haven't been cooking as much, but I knew I needed to get back to cooking and stop eating so much just random stuff. So I have two meals that are crock pot meals that are easy to throw together and then one meal that I cook on top of the stove, but it's very quick and easy. So I hope that y'all will enjoy these beat the heat meals. Um, so anyways, without further ado, let's get started with the video. Hey y'all, we are gonna make cheeseburger pasta skillet. Uh, first, you're gonna need a pot and fill it with some water and let that come up to a boil. And then you're gonna need a large skillet and you're gonna add some vegetable oil to it and let that start to warm up. Once it has gotten hot, you're gonna add in um, about a quarter cup of diced onions and then you're gonna wanna let those saute until they're softened. Okay, next you're gonna add in a pound of ground beef and I'm just breaking this up so that I can add the other ingredients. We're gonna add in a teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt, followed by a, let me see, a teaspoon of Montreal steak seasoning, which I made myself, and a teaspoon of minced garlic. And finally, we are gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. We want two tablespoons of that. So once we get all of those ingredients added in, we're gonna let that cook until it is done. Okay, now that my water is boiling, I added in some salt and we're gonna mix in 12 ounces of macaroni noodles and let those cook until they're done. Okay, I have my little food processor out and I am going to be blending up some diced tomatoes because my kids don't like big chunks of tomatoes. It calls for 28 ounces, so I'm having to do it one can at a time. So I just added in the first can and I'm gonna mix that in with the meat and then I'll go back and do the second can and add it to the meat. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up and then we're going to add in some ketchup. We need a third a cup of ketchup. And we're gonna add in some mustard. We need two tablespoons of mustard. Okay, now we're gonna add in some shredded cheese and we're gonna add in one and a half cups of shredded cheese and we're gonna mix that together very well until it's all combined. Now that it's combined, we're gonna take our noodles that are done, we've drained them and we're gonna add that to our meat mixture and combine it very well. Now, I was out of shredded cheese. You're supposed to put another half a cup of cheese on top. All I had was some um, mozzarella. So we added that, I covered it with the lid to help it melt, and there it is, it's all done. So let's get reactions. All right, Adrian, how did you like the food? It's good. good. Okay, honey, what about you? Thumbs up. Rouse just sat down. Have you took a bite yet? Yeah, I took a few. It's pretty good. Good. And Courtney. Good. She went back for a second, so I guess that was good. And yes, I think it was pretty good. Not too hard to make. Hello, I wanted to share with y'all really quickly this product that was sent to me by the company LifeWit. They sent me this rolling uh, storage cart. It has, um, three shelves, uh, it's slim, it's only 7.9 inches, which is ideal for keeping narrow space organized. You can make smart use of gaps between refrigerators, wall, toilet and wash basin, or washer and dryer to maximize your space. Um, it is 11.8 inches high per layer. It can hold um, large detergents like Tide, several large shower gel shampoos, Etc. You can use this um, all around your home, bathroom, laundry rooms, kitchen. Um, it's very easy to install. It did not take me, not I don't even th think it took me five minutes to snap it together. Didn't even have to use any tools. Um, 
It also has four storage hooks or that are convenient that you can use to hang towels, rags, um, like disposable gloves, whatever you would like to put on it. But I want to thank LifeWit for sending this to me, and I'm going to show y'all how I use this in my kitchen to kind of give y'all an idea um, if you want to use it. And I have a similar one that is in my bathroom that I have beside my toilet that I use for like air fresheners and toilet paper and just different products uh, that you want nearby. Um, so anyways, I will have this link down below in the description box. So if you're interested, go give it a ch uh, go give it a look. Uh, check out LifeWit. They have a lot of other amazing products. I have shared some of those things on my channel too. So anyways, yes, there it is, LifeWit Rolling Cart. Okay, y'all, I wanted to show y'all where I put my little cart at. Right now, it is in here in the kitchen beside my cabinets where I have my air fryer oven, toaster oven. And for now, on the very bottom, this little basket holds some larger towels that I have and some extra placemats. The second um, shelf, I'm not real sure what I'm going to put on it. Um, up here, I have my extra little grease cup. Uh, grease cup liner, sorry if I can speak. And we also have these little hooks on the front, like I showed you in the video. I like this little cart. I'm going to use it also, maybe when I'm outside grilling, I can put stuff on it and roll it around, or even in here, or just extra stuff. But for now, I'm using it to store little things like that. And yeah, I will have this link down below. Hey y'all, so this morning we are gonna do a crock pot meal. So I'm starting out in the morning. I have um, two pounds of hamburger meat in this pan, but I'm only gonna use one pound of it. I just went ahead and cooked two. So we're cooking this up. I seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic, um, powder and onion powder. So getting this cooked and then I'm gonna split it and keep a pound of it. Okay, now that I have our meat done and I'll split it, I'm gonna put some garlic, um, some minced garlic in this. Um, it didn't call for it, but I like to put that in. Um, and I'm adding some uh, Italian, sorry, not Italian season, oregano. I'm, <laughs> I'm adding oregano and uh, the minced garlic which I think I had already added it and realized I wasn't pressing record or I hadn't pressed record y'all I'm so tongue-tied <laughs> anyways so um, I am adding that now I'm gonna add in some Prego traditional this recipe called for 36 ounces of spaghetti sauce which is about a jar and a half so that's what I'm gonna add in now <music> Okay, now we're gonna make our filling to go inside of here. I have a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese and we're going to add to that a fourth of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese and one egg. And then we're gonna mix that together well. And I forgot to tell you, I also added a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Sorry, I am not thinking straight tonight, y'all. Okay, now you're going to want to spray the inside of your crock pot with some nonstick spray. And I actually had a crock pot liner and I decided to use it to make cleanup a little bit easier. And then you're going to want to take your meat mixture and you're going to add about a third of the meat mixture to the bottom of your pan or your crock pot. And next you're going to take just regular lasagna noodles. Um, it says not to use the the no boil you know how they have the kind that you don't have to boil um don't use those use regular lasagna noodles and it says to take about three but basically what you're going to do is break these to where they fit into the crock pot so you have a layer of the uncooked lasagna noodles next you're going to take your um cottage cheese mixture and you're going to put about half of that um, on top of the lasagna noodles and spread that out evenly. Mm -hmm. 
And then you're going to take um, an 8-ounce bag of mozzarella cheese, and you're going to put about half of that over the top of the cottage cheese mixture. And then you're going to take your meat mixture, and you're going to put um, about half of that, another third of it, <laughs> on top of the cottage cheese and mozzarella cheese mixture. Y'all, you know what I mean. <laughs> And now you're just going to repeat those steps again with a layer of noodles, the rest of your cottage cheese mixture, um, your mozzarella cheese, and then the rest of your meat mixture. Now, that is where I get a little confused because it's telling you to use a third of the meat on the bottom, a third on this layer, and then a third on this layer coming up, which leaves you with nothing for the top, which was a little bit, didn't make sense. So... In the future, I would use less um, meat mixture in between because what I ended up doing was I had a little bit of the meat left in the pan and I added some of the sauce that I didn't use in with it, which it worked fine. It's just that top layer didn't have that meaty taste, I guess. Um, and it didn't, it didn't tell you to put cheese on top, but you could probably do that. I just didn't do it because I was following exactly what the recipe said to do. And you're going to want to cook this on low for five to six hours. Okay, y'all, I've had this cooking a little over six hours, almost six, yeah, almost six and a half. So I'm going to turn this on keep warm and meantime, I'm going to make up just some of this garlic toast. The Great Value brand tastes just as good as the Texas style or whatever. So we're going to make that up and also cut some lettuce and tomatoes up for salad. So we will be back in just a little bit. Okay, Adrian, how did you like the food? It was good. Really good. Definitely the, the bread. But, in my <coughs> opinion, I like it better the way my mom does it in the oven. But it is still very, very good. The only reason I didn't eat this part, because for some reason at the top, it kind of got like the little... Yeah. Thickened. But, yeah. Okay. It's good. All right, thank you. Okay, Peyton, my niece, is here. Y'all have seen her many times. Okay, Peyton, her she favorite is she loves when I make my regular lasagna. So, how does this compare? Is it good? It's really good. It kind of tastes the same to me, but I still really, really, really like it. Well, good. All right. Okay, Bryce, how do you like it? I like the baked one better mm -hmm. because of the noodle texture. This almost feels like the noodles are, like, mushier. Mm -hmm. I guess because they've been sitting in the yeah, sauce for so been long. In the sauce, just soaking in it. But whenever it's baked, it's heated faster and it's not as slowly cooked. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least that's what I think it is. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's my thoughts on it. Okay, and I have to brag on him today. He got his ACT scores and he scored in the top 78 percentile. So he scored better than 78% of everyone else who took the test. So my little smarty pants. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And he's a senior. One more year than college. All right, Courtney. How did you like the food? It was good. It was good? <clears throat> it was good? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the salad. the salad. I am still eating mine, but I would have to say I kind of agree with Bryce because I thought it was, I think, I, I mean, it's good for an easy meal for during the mm -hmm. week, but it doesn't compare to, let me turn y'all around and look at my wild picky. self. He is not really picky. It doesn't compare, like, I think the baked lasagna will always be better, but this is when you're in the mood for lasagna and you don't want to heat up your house, this is pretty easy to throw together. I'm always in so, the mood for lasagna. Yeah. She asked me to make her a lasagna for her birthday one year, and I made her her own little extra one to take home. So, anyways. All right, that's this meal for tonight. See you in a little bit. All 
All right, y'all, another easy meal. We are gonna be making cheesy chicken tacos. So I am putting in three chicken breasts and they are still frozen, but I'm gonna put them in. Then we're gonna add in one can of Rotel. Next, you're gonna add in a half a cup of chicken broth, but I am just using some chicken bouillon and adding it to a half a cup of hot water. So I'm gonna mix that up. And then we're gonna also add in a package of taco seasoning. Just to make it easier, I'm just gonna put it in with the chicken broth and then we're gonna pour that over the top of our chicken. Okay, then we're gonna cover it up. We're gonna put it on low and let it cook for about four to six hours. Okay, y'all, the chicken has been cooking. It is now done, so I'm taking it out and I'm just using a couple of forks and shredding it up and then I'm gonna add it back into um, the crock pot and I'm gonna show you the really yummy ingredient that we're gonna add to it next. Okay, y'all, now you're gonna take some nacho cheese or some kind of cheese sauce and like that you would dip chips in and you're going to pour that entire container in with your chicken stir that up and keep it on i put mine on keep warm while i was fixing the rest of my sides and y'all i forgot to show the final product i forgot to get reactions but it was very good. Everybody loved it. My husband was home. He actually sent me this recipe. He found it um, on a Facebook reel and sent it to me. So I'm like, okay, he sent me something to make. I'm going to make it. And it was really good. We just had uh, heated up some flour tortillas, put the meat mixture in there. I had refried beans and also some Spanish rice. And uh, my husband and son, they just put the beans, the rice, the chicken and just made like burritos um, i made mine like a taco with lettuce and tomatoes so did courtney and it was very very good it is a little bit soupy but i just got um some tongs and then i had a spoon that was like a slotted spoon to kind of drain that but it was very good very easy something good on a hot day to just just throw in the crock pot and have ready for supper time so thank y'all so much for joining us for this week's what's for dinner 